Hello everyone, it's November 17th, 2020. It's Tuesday. It's Harp Tuesday! Welcome to this week's episode. So this is kind of a special episode because it's a virtual duet, and this is something I tried a number of years ago with the Bach Gounod Ave Maria. And so here today, I'm looking at Henriette Renier's Le Pince de Charlance, the Pines of Charlance, and it's a, a beautiful duet for two harps or harp and piano. And so what I've done is I've uploaded just the second harp part and invite you to play along with me, to play along with that. I've also recorded a video of me playing both parts just to give you an idea of how it sounds with both parts together. It's a beautiful piece. But uh, yeah, I would invite you to, to play along with that second harp part. Or of course, if you happen to have somebody handy who can play it with you, even better. And what I'm going to do then in this episode is just talk about that first harp part and, and look at some of, the, some of what's going on there. So it starts with this beautiful melody play, being played just in the right hand. And very simple in terms of, of, of the notes, but a great opportunity to really think about the phrasing and what you want to do, and in particular what you want to do sort of between the notes. So the thing is with a harp, unlike the voice, or say the cello or the flute, where when you play a note, you have to continue playing that note until you get to the next one, right? You have to sustain into the next one. On the harp, once we play this note, we're, we're finished with that, and, and, and we can just turn our attention to the next note. But we don't necessarily want to think that way, because what we want to avoid, of course, in, in something like this, is to just kind of be robotic of everything the same. Right, we want, to, we want to imagine that we could control that sustain of the note so that this that maybe we could imagine that there's a mini crescendo decrescendo that this starts soft, gets a little bit louder and then comes back down to, to meet with the E. Again, maybe a little bit of a swell on that C on, on that case as well. And so sometimes it's, it's, it's kind of magical, but sometimes by just hearing that, by hearing that note sustain and, and imagining how we want it to sound, that can create that effect somehow, even though in theory we're not doing anything to affect that sound, but partly how we play it and just, just how, we, how we hear it. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, of course, we, we, we have this, this, in a sense, this, say, this four-bar phrase, but it's kind of separated. So we want to hear that E sustain into the C. But there's also a bit of a sense of a pause, like and we're just hanging out there for a bit. Hanging out there for a bit. Again, a little bit of a pause. So these interesting little little moments of calm in this in this longer phrase. Now all, all these commas, by the way, are ones that I wrote in, and all the uh, I changed some fingerings. Uh, four score with it, I think one of their stamps it lets you do a comma that looks like that, very official looking. But it's just my own suggestion, so you're certainly welcome to ignore that to do the Renier's fingerings or some of your own. But in this case. I'm wanting to let that breathe for as long as possible, so I like the idea of coming off a little bit. And then I'm trying to avoid the thumb. I like the sound of two better. Now here's the case. If we connect as suggested, we'll hear that D get stopped, uh, that, that, that B get stopped, right? And later on, We would hear this this G get stopped, right? If 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 we replace as marked, and it's a bit of a balance because for a beginner, for example, there's something beautiful about getting used to the idea of connecting, and of course that security of knowing. Great, I've got all three of those notes placed and ready to go. 
And so it's not to say you should never do that. It's okay to get that, have that get stopped sometimes. And it's a good, it's a good sort of basic fundamental to practice. But in this case, um, it's not fast. I'm not worried about if, if we're, of course, even though I'm hearing that B gets stopped, I, ha I have to connect for the speed. But in this case, I'm wanting to let that breathe and I'm cutting off. Um, and then, of course, the phrase itself is still not over, right? Maybe it extends all these eight, sorry, eight bars. Oh, no, it hasn't resolved yet. It's still going, right? So, again, I'm coming off and then I'm going one, two, three. Is it over yet? Not yet. Finally, so really it's this 16 bar phrase in a sense from the beginning note until here, even though again, not obviously we're starting in C and we're ending on a G chord. Um, but yeah, just thinking about how you want to shape this beautiful beginning. And again, we because this is a duet, and especially if you're playing along with me, uh, I've been, I, I've all, I, it's already happened. I've already recorded. I can't adjust to what the first part, part is doing. So that means you have to be pretty uh, rhythmically consistent, right? Fairly metronomic. But again, with volume, we can create something that's not being bum 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 that that sings that breathes, um, thinking mainly of of, of volume. Uh, second page then we get the moving part and it's interesting because we, we, we now have the faster notes and of course anytime you're playing in a duet for example the person playing the moving part playing the faster notes is generally the person in charge of the rhythm at that moment of the tempo of the pulse because it's easier to make adjustments and for the other person to follow so that if i'm if i'm playing on every downbeat one two Three, one, two, three. And let's say I want to get faster. One, two. And I'm not counting out loud. I'm just going. And you're playing, say, sixteenths. One, like one and two and three and one and two and three and. Uh, the, 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 sorry, the eighth notes. Um, it's, it's very, very hard to, to, to follow that because there's no context. It's like, when is the next note going to come? I mean, you can show visually. But it is challenging. Whereas if you are playing the faster notes, one and two and three and one and two and three, and you want to get slower, let's say one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three. If I'm playing on the downbeat each time, it's it's quite easy to follow that because I can hear how how you move from note to note that it's getting faster or slower, and I have that sense of that pulse. So again, just to say that the, the moving part generally is in, in charge of the beat. But in this case, of course, if you're playing along with me, again, I, I've already recorded these, so just keep that in mind. But anyway, here we are on harp one, and we have this accompaniment, this little moving part. One and two and three and one and two and three and... Don't forget, or don't miss, that it starts with a rest, so we start on the and of beat one. And we're playing the first three notes with the left hand, then the next uh, five with the right hand, and then the last three with the left hand. This bar is exactly the same, even though they haven't done the double beaming. Um, I, don't know, I don't know why, but uh, yeah, both both times it's so three, two, one, left hand, four, two, one, two, three, one, one, two, four, one, two, three, same one and two and up an octave, same. Nice F chord here. Oh, but we come back down on different notes. So that's just something to sort of be aware of here, right? That that we went up on this F inversion, but we're coming down on a C chord because the next next uh, bunch of groups we're just we're just going up and down the same way on this F chord. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and. 
octave. Now here, this is interesting because this last bar of the second page, to me, I, there's nothing specifically marked here, but I would like to give that almost a mini fermata so that almost as if we're going one and two and three and one and two, three, four, one, that we're almost maybe taking twice as long on that note um, or that, that, that span because there's a rest after it. But um, so that one and two and three and one and two, dum, dee. So just, you know, not much. Certainly, again, not, not a full extra quarter notes worth of time, but just that sense of a bit of a breath, right? A classic little bit of a mo moment before we move on. And then here's another spot where I change the fingering. So the thing is, we've got plenty of time to get set, right? After that A, it's not as if, it's not as if we don't have time. But I'm a, and, and normally, again, I love that idea of coming off on the longer notes, letting them breathe. But in this case, I'm a little bit worried, especially in the left hand with the bigger strings and more vibration, that I'm going to buzz when I place that B, right? I just have to be nice and precise. And, and it's, just, it's just a little bit more work. So instead, I'm just going to place all four of these. Cross under, and I don't mind connecting because I'm not replacing any notes, I'm not stopping anything, it works perfectly. So, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, one. Here with this chord, keep in mind that we're probably going to try to put that top G on the beat so that we have to start a little bit early, right? So that we get one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So that ba, 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 one, that becomes the one. If we can, that'd be nice. And then this is a lovely moment. And after that, the, after that rolled chord in the arpeggio, trying to make sure that in both parts, oops, let me get my pencil back, uh, that we in both hands all eight of these notes come right together between the two hands, right? Like bang on. One, two. Now here we are again. Back with the tune. Again, we might start that a little bit earlier, but there's, there's this poco writ going on, so I think we have a little bit of leeway that it becomes this kind of a swell of sound. Dong. As long as we finish before this, before the and, before the C in the harp two part, it's okay if we maybe don't start it super early. Again, I'm coming off there. Again, coming off. Cross over. A little bit of a rollantando. Back to tempo one. And again, now here we have the moving part. One and two. And harp two has this tune. So harp one, one and two and three and four. I don't do a ton here, but we can stretch that a little bit, right? A little bit of sense of getting heavier and a little broader. One and two and three and one. And you may need to, to do a bit of a open octave and sort of sweep the hand down to get rid of some of that sound. Two and three and one. Two and three and one. And one. So this, uh, call a parte just means to follow follow the the voice follow the lead uh, and in this case here I think for sure if we were playing this in in, in in real life both in the same room the harp one would be determining what's going on on those last five bars 
uh, would be leading the way here, maybe taking a little bit of that. So starting in tempo, two and three. Potentially taking a little bit of time coming down. You know, you wouldn't have to, I guess, or you could take more. But uh, uh, I guess normally the first harp part would be the one I think leading and sort of defining what's happening there. So trying to give some good cues then, um, and of course both people listening as much as possible. Um, so there it is. Let's then just talk a little bit about what to listen for and what to think about if you want to play it with me. So again, I've uploaded the second harp part and you can listen along to that. So right at the beginning, you'll hear me count one, two, three, one, three, one, to hopefully mean, because again, you start, or we, uh, we, we start, the harp one starts. So hopefully when we play this E, it comes boom, right with the start of harp two, one and two and three and. So again, listen for one, two, three, a conducted one, two, Three, one. Um, oh, so uh, it practices at 120, a metronome marking of 120 to the quarter. That's about what I play to that. And so, for example, on the second page, when we do get to do the one and two and three and one and two and three and hopefully 120 will will make it so that we we match up, right? Because again, normally I would be listening. Second heart part, we would be listening to the first heart part is a one. But in this case, you're going to have to hopefully stick with me, but hopefully a 120 will, will, will get us through there. Um, and then again, at the end of this page, this little bit of extra time that I think would be nice to take. One and two and three and one. Just a just a hint of a breath, but I conduct that one, two. I give a nice upbeat on three. So if you can glance at that out of the corner of your eyes, you're maybe also trying to look at the strings and read the music. That's great. Um, and then and then second heart part has the moving part. So even if you don't start the top of page three together, hopefully you can get back with me again. Um, I don't really. Even though it seems as if right here or on this second bar of the second line would be a spot to maybe take extra time. I cue it, one, two, I give a nice upbeat, but it's again it's pretty strict time. And also on the bottom, this poco writ and the fermata, I, I basically just take that straight through. So we get this. straight through and again I try to cue that but just be aware that there's not a lot of extra time being taken. Um, the top of the last page, this Roland Tondo, again I have the, the second heart part has the one and two and three, one and two and three, has the moving part. I'm not taking a ton of time there, partly to make it as easy as possible to play along with me, right? So again if we were in the same room together it's amazing how one can sort of breathe and listen and and watch and and move together. Uh, uh, it's quite magical uh, being able to adjust to to do something to take a little bit extra time when when you want to, um, but it gets a little bit harder when you're playing along with a recording that's not going to be able to adjust. Um, and the poco allergando very minimal, um, very minimal amount if anything of that extra time. And then the ending, so in this case, you will have to follow along with me. So I tried to go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, and two, and three, and one, and two, and three, and one, something like that, something like that. I tried to cue it as, as well as I could. And it's always worth, if you're finding that it's not working out, just listening to back to the recording and trying to figure out, okay, get in your ear the way that that's being played. Reminds me of this uh, great Glenn Gould story. He's he's recording some two uh, two piano two piano LP or something, and he's playing both parts. And he's asked, "How did that recording session go?" "Oh, pretty well, pretty well." I mean, the the second 
piano player was doing something pretty interesting in this section, but I was able to follow along. And of course, he's played both parts, right? You know, so um, yeah. So it's good sometimes just to listen, listen to if you're trying to play with a recording, listen to it, and 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 be aware of what is being done on some of these little moments. Uh, I will throw a link to the music. I think it's on IMSLP. Uh, so if I can find it, I'll I'll throw a link to that down below in the video description. Uh, I will note this bar here. Uh, as far as I know, is a misprint. It should be a G, same as other times in part two. So instead of it's and yeah, it's just a beautiful piece. So I, I hope you will play along with me, and I'd love to hear how that goes. Let me know in the comments below. And in two weeks' time, it will be a special Harp Tuesday because that will be not only episode two hundred but it will also be the 10 year anniversary of the very first episode of Harp Tuesday. So I have something special planned. I will see you in two weeks. Cheers.